Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set our string collars. And for that, because we're working with an existing grade here, we need to set some type of straight edge perpendicular to the excavation. We're going to measure up from the bottom of our straight edge 12 inches and set our string collar at that mark. Good. Now we choose 12 inches as kind of an arbitrary number just to keep the string line above the excavation so it's not easily disturbed by shovels or the bobcat coming through. Because we choose 12 inches as an additional number, it's very easy to add on to the total excavation depth that we're going to be figuring out later when we start excavating the hole. We'll go ahead and we'll repeat this process now for every grade stake around the entire excavation, setting our string collars and then we'll be tying our string. Good. Because we're dealing with the freeform angle in this spot in the excavation, we wanted to double check before we began the final cut in on the excavation and what we found was our final grade stake was a little bit to the left and if you look if I just run a string line what you'll see is the third grade stake falls out of line for the other two so what we did was we made a mark where a straight line would be and we're going to just simply reposition our grade stake We are now marking our excavation line, which is 10 inches from the edge of pavement. This will show the equipment operator exactly where to excavate. By doing this, it ensures we do not over-excavate. Before we can start excavating with equipment, we need to hand dig down 14 inches on both sides of the driveway to try and locate the electrical lines. We will hand dig out 2 feet on both sides of the paint line since the marking is not exact. Even if there is a standard depth that utility lines are buried in your area, Grading and landscaping in the past may have brought the lines closer to the surface. If you expose a utility line during excavation, be sure to mark the area with paint so the equipment operator is aware of it. Just as with the bobcat bucket and shovels, uh, everything goes much faster when we're excavating and grading when we have a nice sharp bucket. So what we're going to do here, uh, we've done a little bit of excavation, but this will speed things up. It's taking a straight edge. We're going to put this right up against the edge here, and if you can see, the sides wear much faster than the center. So what we're going to do is take a grinder to it and do two things. We're going to remove some of the material in the center from about here. I'll do about here with a little bit more taken out in the center. And we'll also run it right across the top and sharpen this actual cutting edge. As far as maintenance goes that really speed things up with the bobcat or skid steer is uh, maintaining uh, max air pressure in all four tires. If it's off by 5 psi on one tire, it doesn't grade properly and it adds possibly hours to the excavation and also the base installation. It's also important at the start of every day to make sure all the pins are fully greased for smooth operation and to reduce wear. And also make sure that the machine has enough fuel and check the engine oil and hydraulic fluid levels. Now this area in here is just going to be a pedestrian walkway for the homeowners to get into the garage. Uh, so we only need to extend the base six inches from edge of pavement. So what we need to do is mark out our excavation. And first thing we're going to do is find out where our edge of pavement is, which is going to be right here. And that's at five foot six. Knowing that we're going to extend six inches, we're just going to do one line for the excavation and mark it at six feet. Okay, in order for uh, us to not to damage this tree, instead of coming in here with a bobcat bucket or a shovel edge, what we're going to take is a pruning saw and trim back any large roots that are sticking out. A pruning saw is preferred over a bobcat bucket or a flat shovel for trimming back the tree roots. This will help eliminate the damage to the vascular system of the tree. We added an additional grade stake right here where the driveway makes a turn. This will allow us to uh, attach a string line and check our excavation and slope. And we really need to have one uh, grade stake installed anywhere that we have a transition such as this. In addition to using string lines, collars, and grade stakes, a laser level is used to record and establish grades. 
Laser levels today are reasonably priced and are much easier and faster to operate than optical transits used in the past. When setting up the laser level, it's important to place the tripod out of the way of any workers or construction machines. Once you've located a place you'd like to put it, then make sure that the feet are firmly implanted into the ground. Go ahead and check your battery. Then we want to achieve a rough level by simply centering the bubble inside of the circle. Once we've achieved the rough level, the unit automatically self-levels itself so there's no more leveling process. Once we have a green light, we're ready to go. We'll go ahead and we'll set the measuring rod up. Then we'll put the target onto the measuring rod. We'll do an initial quick test just to make sure that we're reading the laser. We'll go ahead and test the target. We'll turn on the power, turn on the volume, and we know it is receiving that laser. Now the fast pitch is telling us we're too high, low pitch is telling us we're too low. And that way we don't really have to look at it, we can more or less listen to it. And the steady, pitch. steady pitch means we're right on target. When starting excavation, make sure to use a flat shovel to cut the existing sod instead of the bucket. This will help keep a clean excavation line. The depth of excavation is based on the thickness of the pavers that will be used, the bedding sand, the type of native soil, and the expected use. The native soil on this residential project is clay. In these conditions, industry standards call for 6 to 8 inches of compacted base material under sidewalks and patios, and 10 to 12 inches of compacted base material under driveways. 6 inches for the sidewalk and 10 inches for the driveway was selected. On the driveway, we need to excavate down just over 13 inches from where the top of the pavers will be for the driveway and just over 9 inches for the sidewalk. Since the asphalt removed was 2 inches thick, 11 inches will need to be excavated. The concrete sidewalk was 4 inches thick, so 5 inches of soil will be removed.